Yesterday we finished off building the body of our sonar. And so we got to start connecting everything together. I usually like to start from the most simplest parts. But in this case, we got to start, well, the servo is not a complicated thing, first of all. But we're going to have to start first from positioning our servo into a 90 degree angle so that I can then fixate the fixator on the sonar's head like so straight like that afterwards we will then start by connecting our laser it is the easiest one right over here and now is the time for as they say a disclaimer maybe I can say it's a disclaimer I don't know if all laser modules are the same, but this one over here is, it gives out a pretty strong light. I'm not saying you have to use glasses because when you're using it, you're not, you're not going to be aiming at it at your eyes, are you? Uh, but since these laser modules, modules are activated with a PMW impulse, it is not digital. They're, analo they're uh, analogical. Pardon my English. Uh, they're not digital. Digital is on off. Analogous. Uh, uh, analog. Analog is uh, PWM. You go from 0 to 155. So to account, in account of the intensity of the laser, you don't have to have it up to 255. I, the last time I worked with it, because I do have a video where I use this laser before on an arm robot, I'm working with it at a very low intensity. I think at the time I was using 10 PWMs, and uh, just uh, be attentive to that, I'm, I'm guessing I should say. Uh, so yeah, we're going to move then from the laser to the motion sensor, and then we'll start working on the micro sound sensor. So I'll be right back. So to power my system, I'm going to use my homemade voltage regulator. And all it is, is two volt, two five volts voltage regulators soldered in parallel to a bunch of wires. This was a computer connector. I don't know if you can kind of recognize it. And all these wires lead to one of these connectors. And so I have, as you can see up, I've marked uh, four, the first four connections go directly to the power source, positive. The bottom four exit from the five volts, exit from the power from the voltage regulators which is these four connectors right over here and the last four connectors are for the ground that come over here on the ground of the voltage regulator so let's connect everything together Now, I downloaded to my Arduino Omega the examples that you have on the Arduino IDE. One of the examples, which, which is the sweep uh, on the servo category. But to glue on the sonar head, I have to position the servo on a 90 degree angle. So what did I do? I, I simply commented out the cycle, the sweep cycle, and I write my servo to position itself at 90 degrees so i'm going to download it now so now all i have to do is hook the sensor head on it i'll be right back download it to the arduino omega as you can see and here we go so next step now will be to hook up the laser get it working, then we'll move on to the motion sensor. You can see the intensity change a lot better. 
Here we go. We're at 100. 100 PWM over here. We're going up to 150. Up further to 200 PWM over here. And we're going to go full intensity to 255. There you go. So I'm going to try to work with my laser down to, let's say, this is good enough or a little bit lower even, like that. For today, this episode is complete. Now you may have noticed that when I was in this last part when I actually turned on the laser and I was rotating the potentiometer, you may have noticed that the potentiometer that I was using was different from the one that I had set up in the first recording. Now it's a funny story. <clears throat> what happened was that I switched the positive and negative pin when I hooked the first potentiometer module to the Arduino. I was kind of negligent because in the, at the time I was thinking it's a potentiometer, it doesn't matter where the positive and negative really goes, right? But since it's a module, apparently it does matter. And the funny thing when I came to think about it was in my first impression, it was oh, what a weak piece of, you know, module burning up so quickly on me. But fortunately, actually, that was a fortunate thing. And that is by design. Engineers do that on purpose. It still smells kind of, can you smell that? No, of course not. Uh, but it kind of still smells the, the, um, the wax, the hot, of hot wax. And resin, I mean, hot resin, I mean. And so what happened is before, I sort, I sh obviously I short-circuited the module when I connected it to the Arduino switching the positive and negative pins. And so what happened was the module is designed in a way that it will burn faster than it, so that it will not harm the Arduino itself. As, as, as you've seen later at the second recording, last one, I was rotating the potentiometer and my analog pins, the same one used when I burnt the module, was working fine which means that the safety measure when the engineers designed this worked. Cool thing to think about next time you're using your computer to watch a YouTube uh, clip or using your cell phone. Next time you're using internet, who knows, maybe you'll think about, there's a lot of thought that goes behind these things, even the most simple ones. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.